So this is GTL, and this is the second race I ran. Lights out, and away we go. Unfortunately, my first race I can barely count because I was on the B bike. So this is my first real race on the A bike, and I just get swallowed up in the start. Everybody comes barging past. I leave too much room on the inside much room everywhere and I'm just not super aggressive on the start uh, which is which leaves me a whole lot of work to do because look everybody's just checked out while I'm um, this guy's super defensive for no particular reason because I'm not even attacking him uh, everybody just checks out on me which is unfortunate because it's a 25 minute race but that's a lot of room to, for me to have to make up before the end of the 25 minute race. So let's get to work. Um, like I mentioned on the first, in my first race I ran the B bike, which was unfortunately, this was the first time I ever rode the bike uh, because I really wasn't planning on using it. The reason for that was in practice on Saturday, I uh, crashed the A bike, which is the one that's in the shot right now. Uh, I crashed it in the dumbest way imaginable uh, as I squeezed the brake coming into T T12, my clip-on disconnected completely. So I was right in this little braking area. I just kept, I just held on and went straight and long chunked it, cleaned it out, uh, cleaned it out, replaced a couple of parts. Must have been like a whopping 50 bucks of parts to fix up, but uh, wasn't in time for the first race on Saturday. The only race on Saturday, so I ended up having to run the B bike. But for Sunday, I fixed up the A-bike, so now I'm in a race, but by the looks of it, I'm in a race all by myself for like 12th place, which is a little unfortunate, except that somebody just dove underneath, and that is uh, Robert Crackle, and he is a really cool guy. I didn't meet him that weekend, but I did find him online afterwards and chatted a bit with him. Um, really good rider. I think he said it was his first time at Pitt as well. Um, but keep an eye out for a couple of things with him. Uh, keep an eye out for mid-corner adjustments, and keep an eye out for wiggles as he gets on the power. Both of those seem to be spending a little bit of, uh, wasting a little bit of time, and I guess early turning in that case too, kind of not using the whole track turning in a little early. He'll, he's a really good rider, but if he were to use the entire track, I wouldn't be able to keep up with him. And because he's kind of robbing himself of time and space, I can actually hold on to him. So I am going to. I'm going to chase this guy down because this is a race I can participate in. There's no catching the guys up front anymore because they're way out there. But uh, just kind of hanging out here, I can see that he's not walking away from me, which means I can put up a fight. So let's get at it. Now this is, uh, this was a weird weekend, and see right, I'm right back up on it. This was a weird weekend for me with um, bike stuff, rain stuff, uh, camping, everything else. Uh, this is my first time using the stupid yellow van, and I found that I don't sleep very well in the stupid yellow van because there's not that much sound insulation, so I was listening to generators all night. Uh, so that's something I gotta make an adjustment about. And then with um, with the rain and everything else, I just, um, well, the rain that came after this, uh, I just kind of ended up not doing my last two races and going home because I was just soaked and miserable. This is also the only video I got from the whole weekend because uh, I don't usually run the GoPro at practice. The B-Bike didn't have the camera set up. Uh, and uh, the rain was like, I was not sure about drowning my GoPro. But anyway, let's make the best out of this video. So, uh, I use a little bit more track on entrance and um, turn in a little bit later and that gives me a little bit better drive. See, I'm kind of bringing it back across the straight. Um, also, see, he kind of starts creeping over way early. Um, which gives me an extra few inches um, of distance. He's really good at getting on the power though. Like, um, that little wiggle 
will occasionally see as he powers up, that's him basically lo almost losing a rear, a rear tire traction. So that means he's basically maximizing what the bike can put down. I am most certainly not, because as you can see, every straight he makes up ground on me. But I'll make up some ground in these S's. I feel like I'm a little quicker through here. Um, either that or it looks like it because you know, a second at 120 is different than a second at 60. Um, this one's one. So, anyway, um, if you notice the little intro shot of me flopping over, that was from Contact Patch Photo. That was a really cool shot he snagged. Uh, Michael goes or Gozy. Uh, I'm not sure how to say that, but uh, really appreciate it. I think I'm going to be just dropping that as the intro shot in every video now. Um, but yeah, so between sl the sleep situation, the rain situation, my uh, self disassembling bike, I'm so. I'm so happy to part out bikes. I start while I'm in the middle of a practice session, just start taking things apart. Uh, this was really like my only real race. The rain race I got afterwards, I did pick up a third somehow, I guess because nobody bothered to show up. Um, but it was just basically just cruising around. I did get in a fight with a ZX6R because it's a multi class, but the ZX6R was in. Um, was in Formula 40, which was gridded up behind us. So when he passed me, I was like, oh, "I'm getting." I'm gonna, uh, I thought he was like a 650 or something like that. So uh, ended up with a little bit of a battle with a ZX6R that didn't matter, which is frustrating because I could have literally just cruised around and got the exact same result. So anyway, let's see if we can get back up on Robert. Uh, this back area, you can you can make a break a lap because depending on how well you drive up the hill, there's a, like, from here out up it's all power, and if you take that turn a little slow, you are wasting time, like I am. But uh, this is also an area where you can get on the brakes pretty late, like almost at the like one and a half board, one board, uh, and trail it into the right hander. Uh, so, still got plenty of time to go to eight minutes into a uh, 25 minute race um, and maybe I can make up some ground I don't actually know how I just came right back up on him I think he made a mistake somewhere maybe he slowed down a little for that turn or was a little offline didn't get on the power or whatever doesn't really matter um, well, let's see if I can capitalize somehow so this back straight you really need to sack up and keep the throttle on all the way. Throttle, 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 throttle. You can see my RPMs are not throttling. So, um, once again, I'm not sure why Robert takes that like weird middle to inside line. Maybe it's a defensive uh, line for him, or maybe it's just creepy. Oh, yeah, you can see he's getting tired. He's shaking out his hands. Um, maybe I can capitalize on that as well, because 25 minutes isn't. A short race, but it is basically like less than half of my endurance stint, so I know I'm, I have plenty of energy. And yeah, there we go, right back up on him, and let's go, maybe catch a little bit of a draft. Uh, I popped out too early, I think, because I wasn't sure where he was going to break, but uh, let him be, let him take the corner, uh, little, lose a little bit of momentum, so he regains a little bit of distance. But, uh, yeah, so on the back straight, you really need to sack up and keep the throttle pinned, but it's really hard to do. You need a lot of aggression. I just don't have it. I'm like not really an aggressive rider, which is also why when I get swallowed up easily by packs or you know, somebody, if somebody if somebody shows me a wheel, I'll usually just let them have it because why I, I need to be at work on Monday. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to push a little bit to see if I can capitalize on a mistake. I'm hoping something happens because... See that little wiggle? Like, he stands up. Like, he, he's making steering adjustments mid-corner because he's coming in too early or too shallow. And that causes him to have to hammer the throttle more trying to make up time on that. This isn't a good bike to... An SV is not a good bike to try to make up time on the throttle. 
you really do need to carry some roll speed. Um, and yeah, so like, hey, I have to roll off a little bit because this is not a kink I want to stand up by anybody and there's no run off. Once again, he's on this defensive middle of the track line. Um, I guess it prevents dive bombs like he did to me, but at the same time, it's it's slower. Uh, he would turn a much better lap using up the entire track. Um, like I am here, a little bit further right, um, and like, I make up quite a bit of ground in time one. So, braking zones, I'm making up ground. Throttle, he's making up ground. In the middle of the turn, he's just offsetting my time. I kind of shift over to the left, taking a try to dive him on the brakes, but that doesn't happen. So, still sitting right ba back behind him. This is the this is the least battley battle so far. I'm just kind of hanging out, but I am going to reel him in, and I am going to pass him somehow. And I uh, don't yet know how, but it's going to happen. So, other things from this weekend that were interesting. Um, I went to pick up a bike with my friend Tony Bags because it was like an hour away from a pit race. So I ended up, uh, even even when I go racing, I'm apparently looking for bikes to buy. Uh, met a bunch of cool people. Uh, my friend Mark was racing. Um, he's one of the Bike Experience USA guys. If you haven't seen, I don't know what that is, check, it, check out the video I did about them. Or, uh, TBEX USA, TBEX USA.org. Uh, check out what they do. It's a really cool thing, and those guys are phenomenally fast. Some of them. But um, specifically, this race, I mean, we're battling, and I don't even think Robert knows that we're in a battle yet, but uh, we're probably battling for like 10th or 12th or something stupid like that. I don't know, whatever, whatever number that is. So I like to break along the outside and then hook in. He kind of breaks in the middle and then just kind of... I mean, you can see it's working because he's pulling away. So he's he's doing, he's definitely doing the put the power down a bit better than I am. Uh, not sure what happened here, but I'm like pulling on like a freight train or something. Maybe, uh, maybe something happened with throttle. Oh, he got a little wiggle and off to, I don't know, off to the grass? he went? Maybe? We'll see. So, hopefully that's him dispatched, but um, now I can now I can have a really lonely race again or show him what the, what the right line is. I don't know, one of the two. Um, but yeah, nothing in front of me, like the one guy that I can see way out there is like a good I don't know, it's gotta be like 15 seconds. Like, there's no reeling him back in. Like, I'm all by myself here. Basically, so I'm gonna th I'm gonna just see if I can turn good laps and run away, and if I do that well enough, then I won't have Robert to deal with anymore. And uh, you know, one position up, and treat this race as a practice from here on out. Because uh, you know, no uh, no nobody challenging me, but also nobody throwing off my rhythm. Because when you're behind somebody, you kind of end up running a slightly different race than you normally would. You kind of end up running their race rather than yours. Because if they're in their way for in the way for your line, um, you're kind of wasting time. You also have to have the intelligence and like you know, like the CPU cycles between uh, operating the bike, looking for stuff, to realize that like don't ride like them because following them around just means you'll do the same thing that they're doing. Instead, ride your own lines and uh, try to, to oh, and whoa, look at that. Robert made it through T1 and dive bombed me through 17, 18. Cool, good for him. All right, we have a battle again. Let's rock it. So um, I'm already kind of getting hyped because like, hey, we passed each other twice. We are on the same level today. I don't know, uh, there could be other tracks that he's much better at. There could be other tr other days where I'm much better. I know I'm not riding up to my full potential compared to even like other videos from Pit, uh, from like teaching days or whatever. But if we passed each other three times so far, you know, he passed me once, I passed him once, he passed me again. 
Uh, that means we can go have a little battle, and uh, this will be uh, this will be my nemesis for today. And off to the woods he goes. Uh, I guess he said he hit a false neutral or something. But I'd made the mistake of giving him the slow down sign, like basically palm down. Um, it, it wasn't. I wasn't trying to antagonize him. I was a little worried that that like he was riding over his head and that like, the instructor muscle memory kind of kicked in and just kind of gave him the slow down sign. In hindsight, that's kind of... I wasn't... It could have been interpreted as like me messing with him. Uh, but really it was like, you blew two corners, you're trying too hard. What, two corners in, two, in a lap and a half? You're, you're trying too hard, like, turn it down, like, finish it safely. But, wait. So one, we're catching up to somebody, and two, I see raindrops on the windshield. Oh boy, will this get interesting, because we're out on sleds, we're not out on, uh, we're not out on street tires, we're not out on intermediates. Hopefully it's just a little drizzle, and through because otherwise this will get real interesting. There's a whole bunch of Midwest guys and there's Robert again diving in. This is his bread and butter pass. He just loves like getting me on the brakes into 17 and 18. Well, I mean, he's earned it. It's working for him. We're now on back and forth number four. Um, a whole bunch of Midwest guys that were out there all really quick. And the just go past that guy like he's parked. I think he's just really scared of the rain. That's no, really coming down there. They said they were basically saying that all the Midwest tracks, like Grattan, uh, Black Hawk, and stuff like that, all uh, they get really skiddy when it's wet. Pittsburgh is not like that. It's uh, it's a very grippy track. So even on slicks, even in the rain, like I wouldn't head out into a rain race on slicks, but. Like, you can finish it if you don't push too hard. And that's what we're doing. But right now, I gotta see if I can put up any fight over this position. Obviously, if Robert can go, I can go. Because he's on slicks, I'm on slicks. We can make this work. Um, the thing I'm worried about is tucking the front. Because uh, I can ride out a rear wiggle. I don't think I can run that right out uh, front of the I don't know what this, I'm not even sure if that's a 650 or a 400. Um, I don't know what that was, but everybody's super cautious. And uh, Robert and I are clearly not <laughs> compared to these guys because we're going past them like they're parked. Um, I mean, I guess if you're scared of the rain, um, you're worried about being out on, the, on slicks in the rain, then uh, take it easy and hidden or whatever. Somehow through all that I ended up running right back on Robert and yeah we're not going full bore through any of these corners but um, for somebody who's not throttle shy he's like being a little throttle shy and I'm just kind of hanging out back there uh, thinking like well you know just to watch him and see, see how it goes not want us up we're gonna, we're gonna have a safe race here. Uh, once again, especially in the rain, it's more important to do everything smoothly and correctly when it's raining. You don't want to upset the bike, you don't want to twitch the bike. Oh, look, some of these pitting in. Hashtag no balls. Um, we're going to stay out, though, and I'm going to see if he's not throttling. I'm going to throttle. Let's see if that doesn't. It doesn't. It's, but we're slowing down. We're like, this is like a turtle race. This is kind of a, this is kind of a, like, low aggression. I'm just going to try a little harder than you. But, uh, kind of getting him on the straight, getting him into the braking zone. But he just kind of hangs it around the outside and makes it, makes it, uh, retains his position. Which is really awesome, like, this is, like, the world's most casual battle. Uh, it's really fun actually. Not sure where he went off to that time. Um, but yeah, so you want to be smooth. You don't want to make any turn adjustments. You don't want to get on the throttle too hard. You don't want to get on the, on the brakes too hard. You want to get, uh, do everything you can. Body English, same thing. Like, 
use your body just to let the bike take the load off the tire. Uh, one thing, if you just if you if you just notice that maybe you have to get a little bit more turn left at the end of the turn, and that's a consequence of turning in too early. Um, not the end of the world, but um, you know, if you turn a little later, yeah, see, like little, little tiny mid quarter adjustments uh, all around. Those are probably part of just not looking far enough or just not being comfortable with this track yet. When we're, uh, when we're uh, I don't want to use scared as like a bad term, but like when we're, uh, you know, slightly stressed by the unknown. We tend to make actually worse decisions. You sink to the level of your training. You don't rise to the occasion. But speaking of rising to the occasion, I'm going to use my horsepower and try to motor him here. Uh, I think I can. Nope. I think I gave it up and he's it hung it around the outside. Again, that would be a really bad place to eat shit. I don't know where he's off to, but that is not the line. Um, but also, I'm not, uh, I don't have a problem of choice right now. As far as what I do, it's also really hard to see. Like the camera's behind the windshield, and the windshield's getting a lot of wind and like, pushing water, but like my face is getting blasted with water, so it's actually kind of a little difficult to see in places. Uh, go around this yellow whatever. I'm jealous of his bike color. I'm not jealous of his suit color because I have the. You guys noticed that I have that like yellow hyper naked banana thing, which is hilarious and awesome and has a big Chiquita logo on the back because Kellum's a troll. Um, but yeah, so um, anyway, I gotta paint my bike something, especially after shoving it into the ground. So I gotta change my colors a little bit. But let's see if I can make something happen with Robert out of these last couple of turns, last couple of laps, because we're coming up towards the end, we have to be. So I kind of look up the inside, thinking maybe I can do something on the brakes, decide better of it. Um, do a lot, like through the S's, completely missed the apex, which kind of threw me off because I was going to occupy that space, but she was wider than I expected. Through the S's I make up a little bit of time, especially like, for some reason at the last S. And I don't know where he's going there, but I guess he's getting tired, and it's hard to see. That is not how you do that turn. This is. So, I want to see if I can get him on the brakes. Nope, didn't have it. This, this is pretty much, this entire thing has pretty much been, like, who wants it more. And I think, uh, like, Robert really wanted it more. Uh, I guess the first prerequisite, why are you here? Why do you exist? Like, that was a really bad time for her to catch a back marker, because now I got, like, a couple of seconds to make up. Um, this is not helping. Uh, but the first prerequisite of winning is wanting to win, and I feel like Robert wanted to win, and I was indifferent about it. I wanted to have a, I wanted to have a battle, I wanted to mess around, I wanted to, like, get comfortable on the bike, but I don't think I wanted to win. Now, remember how, like, at the beginning, they'll like, 12 people or whatever swallowed us up? So, yeah, that was the check. Um, so, after the race, I discovered that Robert picked up a fourth and I picked up a fifth. So, all those guys that swallowed up, swallowed me up in this, up off the start and ran away, uh, yeah, so we're getting side by side, giving each other high five, uh, giving, giving each other thumbs up. All those guys that uh, ran away at the beginning of the race, all of them either decided to pit, or I don't know where they went, but they didn't finish the race, so... Um, so, I ended up with a fifth. Uh, in the rain, uh, slightly later I, on the rains, I ended up with a third as well, but the camera wasn't rolling for that one. So, just goes to show you that like, just because a uh, race is over, like, uh, you're, not, you're not up front, doesn't mean you just give up and like drop anchor. You can still have a good race in the middle of the pack or in the tail end of the pack, and actually end up with a good result if everybody up front eats each other up somehow. Or just in, like in this case, they just don't punt it. So anyway, really fun race, really weird weekend. Uh, this was definitely the best race of the weekend, um, and um, hopefully I catch a little better weather. Hopefully I get a little better sleep. Uh, 
the next event, which I think is going to be summit towards the end of the day. So, catch you guys later. Hope you enjoy this.